Okay, I've got some information for you guys, which I've been asked about several times. I want to apologize up front for the uh, quality of this uh, audio, but I wanted to get this done fairly quickly tonight so that you guys would have this available, because I know a number of you been interested in picking up this particular Flashpoint adapter, the Evolve 200 Twin Head adapter, which is being sold actually under several names. Uh, it's manufactured by Godox. It's also available under uh, uh, the Flashpoint name, as you can see right here as well. And I suspect it won't be long before other companies will have it as well. And you can see, of course, it's branded as the Evolve Twin Head. Originally, the documentation for this allowed for the ability to use not only uh, these LEDs independently of one another through the mounts on the back, number one and number two here, which take advantage of the Evolve uh, 200 AD power packs, which fit on the back of this. But the thing that made this rather interesting to a lot of us who pre-ordered it is the ability to not only use the original bare bulb tube uh, flash, uh, xenon flashes that were available for both this mount here and the mount here, but this interesting three pin mount in the center was to have originally allowed for the 360 bulb, which is actually a 400 watt bulb that's conservatively rated at 360 watt seconds to allow the use of this as long as you had both packs installed on the back. As you guys are no doubt aware by now from uh, some of the other videos on YouTube and from a change in the documentation, that is no longer the case. When they actually released this unit, they released it where you would be allowed to use either a single bare bulb here, a single, single bare bulb here, or the same bulb that was used up here would be usable in the center three pins as opposed to allowing the higher power of 360, which means you can get 200 watt seconds out of the bulb, but now it appears in the center of the unit. The advantage being, of course, when you place this using the Bowens mounts, um, allow a modifier to be used with it, it puts the bulb more in the actual geometric center of that modifier, allowing for a more even light throw. While that's cool, it really doesn't allow us to use the greater higher powered bulb that we were all hoping to use uh, when we pre-ordered this. So I wanted to do something a little bit different from the other videos that you guys have already seen on this, and I'm gonna do a really quick teardown on it to show you what they did on the inside of this unit, and then, interestingly enough, I think it's gonna be possible to create something aftermarket that will allow us to actually utilize this type of a connector to actually implement the 400 watt second bulb. That's what makes this worth watching. So guys, if you'll be uh, patient with me here just a moment, I'm gonna speed the video up, but I am gonna go ahead and remove the four screws here. The only thing that's necessary to gain access to the inside. So I'm going to remove each of these screws in turn. And actually this doesn't take very long, so rather than going through this at high speed, I'm simply going to pop these little guys out right now, and you'll see there's just four required. The thing I really enjoy about the Flashpoint series of units, as they're sold by Adorama as an example, which is actually the Godox unit. Once again, they're all named differently, but manufactured under exactly the same specifications, is that they really do a nice job of engineering, and they're very, very straightforward in design. So let's take a look and see what's on the inside. Let's take a look at the magic. Now, as you guys may be aware, on the AD200s, the actual individual uh, flash packs themselves, the actual power supplies, all of the intelligence resides inside that pack. The various heads you can place on there, the LED head, the AD200 bare bulb flash, or the uh, monolith that's available uh, for it as well, the xenon internal tube, actually really are just basically the illuminator. There's actually nothing in that thing but a bulb. Let's take a look and see if this follows that same pattern. So I've removed those four screws. I'm gonna pull this up here to expose the internals. And you'll see it's actually kind of a nice design. There are two circuit boards here, one for each of the LEDs on the front. See right here. And these square packs are actually thyristors, or thermistors rather, that shut off the uh, LED if it starts to overheat against these heat sinks here. If we don't uh, dissipate the heat in a passive fashion adequately enough, these are designed to be shut down uh, if they overheat. So that's what these devices are here for. And they do so at, I believe, 65 degrees Celsius. So that's what these devices right here are. What remains then is essentially plastic collars that you can see through the front. And these insulators here, I'm gonna turn this to the side so you can see it. These are simply uh, the standard cloth insulators that are designed to protect these high voltage posts here that the bulbs plug into. But if you'll notice, once again, it's consistent with the other units in that there's no smarts in here. Now I'm going to take this board apart. I haven't yet done that. But the first thing I'm gonna do is show you the build quality on this and how it's designed. First thing you're gonna notice is the heat sinks themselves are removable. So we're gonna take those aside and I'll place one here so you can see where that sits. And I'm gonna remove the other section right here. There are also two fins that go down there, two metal fins. 
which should still be attached to the unit. There they are, in fact, there's one of them. And this allows for heat dissipation through the top and bottom of the unit. So that appears there, and then there's a second one down here in the base, like so. You can see that. So I'm going to place that right here as well. The only thing that remains in here that's actually loose at this point are the aforementioned insulators here, which are designed to prevent these from obviously ever shorting when the unit is charged. You would never want to leave this unit open like this with the battery packs installed, obviously, because these do contain very high voltage uh, and a fairly decent amount of current to be able to fire those lamps. But basically, this is what it looks like on the inside. So essentially, you can see, and I'll hold this at a little bit different angle here, that there's just some solder connections down here on the bottom that correspond and are connected to the pads that you can see inside here, these metal contacts on each side that make contact with the actual AD power packs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off. They're already popping out. I mean, they're not, they're not tied down anyway, and they can be very easily replaced. It doesn't take but a few seconds to replace these. And so I'm gonna pull these out of the way to simplify our view of the unit. And what I'm gonna be doing over subsequent videos is showing my efforts to create an adapter that will allow that to work. Now understand, as one of the videos on YouTube will tell you, there was probably a very good reason that they opted late in the design process not to support that 362. And the reason for it, I suspect, I have to agree with having looked at the design of this now with the other uh, gentlemen who've written about this and uh, talked about it, is that the 360 tube that fits in here is very, very similar in its construction to the 180, 180 watt second tube. And if you were to force that into these pins and they were designed to support the 360 by bridging these two power units that fit on the back, uh, you'd overpower that bulb and very likely either blow it out or cause it to shatter catastrophically, which would not be a good thing. That would be a bad day. So it's understandable that they're not allowing that to happen. And what they've done instead is to simply allow you to use that uh, same standard bulb either in position one, two, or in the center, uh, which is still tied to one. And in fact, you can actually see how they've accomplished that by noticing that this pin here, which is on this trace, and this pin here are electrically connected as are the pins here and here. Now what that allows them to do essentially is to have that bulb to either be oriented here, here, and here, or here, here, and here, which essentially allows you to put the bulb either at the top or in the center position and still have that single AD200 bulb uh, fire off effectively. But the downside to it is you can't put in anything with a higher wattage. And so if you wanted to get more light output to get close to that, uh, half an f-stop away from an AD600, which is one of the things we were really excited about being able to do with this unit, you're gonna have to wait a while until something becomes available to let you do that. The cool thing is by looking at how simple this design is, and I'm going to break this down a little bit further and take a look to make sure there's no electronics on the back side of this solder pads or the back side of this circuit board. Assuming there's not, I believe it's entirely possible to develop an adapter daughter card that will fit on the front here snapping it in and allowing a three, an AD360 bulb to be functional on that. So please stay tuned with my further progress here. I'm gonna reassemble this unit off camera and then uh, start to do some work on this. And I hope to have a video fairly shortly uh, with a prototype of that board, uh, allowing us to do perhaps something that while they may be concerned um, at the mothership about this, I think if we can make it available and provide it in a way that can't be um, misused, it could be a very, very valuable addition to our Flashpoint our itinerary and our, our, uh, our uh, weapons, if you will, for uh, doing our photography and getting some great lighting. So I'll be back with that shortly. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll be right back. And thanks again. Take care. This is Jeff Wright, the prototographer, with some interesting news here, an update on the Flashpoint Evolve twin head adapter. Till then, later guys.